Hello there and welcome to the unboxing of a White Knights watercolour palette. This is the 36 colour palette, all of full pans, um, by Nevskaya Palitra. I apologise for dreadful pronunciation. These are Russian manufacturers um, and I have been using a, a small set of seven of these colours for quite a while now. It was my birthday so this is a birthday present and quite a beautiful one uh, I found it to be. I'm a hobby watercolourist um, I have quite a lot of watercolour sets, probably more than I need, but I do have a real soft spot for them. Um, this palette I've been after for quite a while. It is, um, like I say, it's 36 colours and here I have the um, card um, and I'm just opening out the different sections. The bottom part of the palette lifts out so you can just use the top part. I will say this is, it's really quite a large um, set, uh, especially with being full pan. Uh, the ruler that you just saw was a 15 centimetre ruler, so it is, like I say, it's quite large. There's a variety of mixing wells um, on the lift out piece and in the lid. Uh, the lid's separated into four large wells and the base piece into 12 smaller ones. The pans are wrapped in foil and then paper. The small palette uh, I'm holding there is um, it's a miniature one that I made myself and filled with an individual selection of paint um, but they are White Knights paints different to what is in the 36 colour set. The um, pan that I'm showing you it's got the pigment numbers on it's also got a little code so that you can see if it's transparent or semi-transparent. Um, the Of the 36 colours there, was a, there is a really good selection. There's a white, three yellows, well, six yellows, but two I'd definitely call more towards orange and one is yellow ochre, uh, which is more the earth colour. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight reds. Uh, dioxazine violet is in there. Um, and then you've got a range of blues and a range of earths. Um, there I'm just using... To, in order to get the information on the card, I do like to have all my information on my swatch card. Uh, this palette does come with a really decently sized um, swatch card and it is on watercolour paper, which is, is definitely something that I personally like. Um, and on there I've written all the information. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'll hold it up in a minute. Uh, apologies, I'm recording the audio separate from the video here. Um, so yeah there we go so i have written the pigment name the pigment number which i do buy my colors by i try and avoid names because they can be different for the same pigments or the same for different pigments um the full pans as you can see they're really quite large um they're also very nicely set up it, it's just a really nicely made palette um it is white plastic, it does stain. I, personally, that doesn't bother me that much because I do clean my palette. I know a lot of people like to leave mixed colours on it. Um, I'm not keen on that. I don't like to reuse mixed, mixed paint unless there's a, there's a, you know, a good amount. Um, what I'm also adding to the card is a little block to show whether the paint is transparent or semi-transparent. Um, all the pigment information and also the light fast rating. Now, um, when I unboxed it, uh, this particular one, I did notice a um, stamp on it that says this set was made 10 10 so 10th of October 2017, which is quite recent. I've seen other reviews of these paints uh, that have talked about a lot of the paints being non light fast in here. Uh, on this range, one is probably the least, well, it is the least light fast. Uh, and three is the most light fast. In the one, in the version that I've unboxed, some of the some of the colours have changed, and there is only one one star paint in there that I can see. The rest are all two or three star. There's a range of cadmiums. Um, I'm not particular particularly keen on using the, the cadmiums, but I will say that unwrapping them, 
as you can see from from the video they're like little sweets they're just they're just lovely to look at um very pretty look very inviting the colors the pigments themselves look really strong even in the pans as you can see um the one that i have unwrapped at the start of that row that i'm doing now is actually cobalt blue and you can see from that it, it can be you know weaker than ultramarine um but it's, it's still a nice strong pigment um in this set um what to say about the actual colour selection? Like I say, a few of them are cadmiums, and I'm not keen on those, but I found that there's a really good range despite that. Um, I absolutely love the one paint they've left in that's a one-star light, light fastness rating, which is the Violet uh, PV3. It's absolutely, truly beautiful, very, very strong. Um, and I'm using this set in sketchbooks so the light fa fastness doesn't particularly bother me um, I would of course avoid that, that avoid that particular pigment if I was working on a canvas um, the set itself uh, you can see when I measured it the whole size is about 36 centimeters by about 27 centimeters give or take the bases are slightly curved um, to, so that the middle uh, of the wells lie flat, another feature that I like. Um, so, you know, give or take a little bit of room for edges. Um, another review said that the paints were very sticky. You can see that I'm trying that out there. Um, one or two of them are. They certainly were in the original mini palette that I put together myself. Um, I believe White Knights listens to feedback and checks reviews. These paints were far less sticky than the original ones that I opened before, before moistening. They are semi-moist in the pan though, so they're not as dry as some paints. They're certainly not as dry as tube paints that I've squeezed out and then left to dry in other palettes. Um, so the actual paints, another um, kind of problem that I've heard leveled about this palette is that there's a lot is that there are, there were not originally a lot of single pigment paints in here um, I'm looking at the card now I can see out of the 36 only nine are not single pigment now so the other what 27 there's 27 sig single pigment paints in here now it's certainly in the set that i've got dated 10th of october 2017 of uh, the paints that are not single pigment there's only um, five that have three different pigments in um so overall i would say this set was an absolute bargain um, it's got full pans of painting. I think I, I think the cost of it was somewhere around forty-two British UK pounds. Um, so for thirty-six paints and a large palette, I, I certainly wouldn't be complaining at that. It's a lot cheaper than, uh, say, uh, than some of the others that I own, including Daniel Smith, uh, Jane Davenport paints. Um, I have. You know really quite a big selection and this was definitely one of the cheapest if not the cheapest in fact the only cheaper one that i think i've owned is the cop is the windsor newton cotman the, the student grade um one of the things that i've heard about these paints is that um, some people are considering them to be student grade because of the price that is certainly not what white knights are advertising on their website they are advertising um artist grade paints and i know there are plenty of artists actually using these paints um so um you know you can see them on all of youtube there's people who only use these paints uh, and they are to my mind definitely increasing in the popularity stakes um okay so um we're nearly at the end of the unwrapping uh, of of them so uh, in a minute I am going to be begin squ uh, swatching them out the pen that I'm 
using is um, is a micron, uh, a pigma, a secure pigma micron. Um, and I'm trying to get it in view of the camera. I'm sorry, my camera has not focused very well on that at all. Uh, to try and show you some of the information on the paints. Um, the was one that I was um, a little bit um, not happy with. And I think it might have been the sepia because of the combination of paints in it. But um, I think it was just an odd mix uh, in that particular, you know, one that I'm not used to seeing. But I do not use a lot of sepia or black paint. I'm, I, I mix my own neutrals. Um, so I tend to mix my own version of Payne's Grey. Um, so here we are. You can see that the card is a, is a decent size. It's the full size of a third of the palette. And when you fold the palette up, it, do, it does fold into thirds. And I am going to have to uh, knock the size down, I think, to keep it on the screen. Um, so I'm going to start swatching. The whole, like I say, the palette is so big that it was difficult to keep on the screen uh, while actually carrying out the swatching. That's a Rosemary & Co collapsible travel brush. It's um, a round mixed hair, uh, mixed natural and synthetic hair. Uh, I believe it's a size 8, that one. And it's uh, probably one of the most beautiful brushes that I have ever used. I do love it very, very much. This is the Yellow Ochre. Um, I will say that the White Knight's earth tones are really weak, uh, especially when compared to, um, say, Daniel Smith earth tones, which are not just strong, they're also very granulating. Now, some of the White Knights were were granulating colours. The Yellow Ochre, not particularly. It, it's so pale, as you can see on that swatch. Um, the colour is so pale, it basically... It blended into the yellows. I had to actually look for it to realise that it was yellow ochre. Um, apart from that one as well, the earth tones are all on this. That's the top uh, line on the swatch card that I am painting out now. All the earth tones were on the bottom line. Um, so the paints that I've swatched from the beginning are zinc white, cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow medium, uh, yellow ochre is fourth there, and then the or first orangey one is golden, then golden deep, then Hansi yellow, titian red, and ruby. And you can see that there is some uh, lovely shades. Uh, it's a really good range. There aren't any that I would say are the same, although golden and golden deep are really similar. They are actually different pigments. Um, Golden, once it's dried, it's got kind of a reddish overtone, whereas Golden Deep uh, is more towards uh, a, a very deep orange. Um, the ruby is also a beautiful colour. Now on that second line, so far I've swatched out Cadmium Red Light, English Red, which is an amazing colour that I use a lot uh, from this palette, uh, Quinacridone Rose, beautiful, very strong, Carmine, and the one that I'm doing now is Madder, uh, Madder Lake Red Light. The next one is Quinacridone Lilac, which is a lovely, deep, strong lilac. And it's not one that I've received in any other mixed palette. Um, it dries really quite powerful. And the one after this is the Violet. Uh, now, that is the one and only um, low light fast rate in paint in this whole set. It's very strong, very deep, um, and I love the colour. It stays that powerful when dry. Uh, the next colour is uh, the White Knights Ultramarine. Um, it is granulating, not as strongly granulating as, as others have seen, certainly not as strongly granulating as uh, Daniel Smith. And the final one on that line is Thalo Blue. Um, as you can see, even the blues are uh, the blues are really quite strong, even in comparison to the to the violet. The first paint on 
the next line is cobalt blue and the next one is another favour of mine um, Indenthrene blue I think that's usually Indenthrone blue but on this set it's Indenthrene blue PB60 uh, fairly close to an indigo and um, it, it's a lovely stormy deep blue colour the third one there is turquoise blue um, it that one does it is it is blue it's not um, some of them tend towards aqua um, and towards more green shades there is an element of that it is turquoise but it, it is quite strongly blue um, and then indigo the one I'm swatching out now is a very weak colour it's cerulean blue um, now I use the Daniel Smith version of cerulean uh, really quite extensively um, this one is much weaker but I found that can be quite helpful sometimes for English skies. The one that I've just watched is yellowish green. And then on the remainder of that line, we've got um, emerald green, which is that one. And that's PG7, which is one of the um, paints in the yellowish green. The yellowish green is a mixture of, of that and one of the yellows. Um, that one is green, it's just called green, PG8. I, th I think this is pretty close to the, I have got a sap green in White Nights in the Little Palette, but I think that one's pretty close to the sap green, although it's darker and mossier. And the last one is a beautiful colour called olive green. This is one of the three pigment paints. Another of the three pigment paints um, that's already been swatched out there was the indigo. And on the final line, chromium oxide which is a brilliant colour heavily granulating I would have said one of the most heavily granulating on this swatch card if not the most I think it might be the most now I'm looking at them you know completely dry um, then raw, that's raw sienna and as you can see from that I had to put down quite a lot of pigment to strengthen it up again I, I'm used to the Daniel Smith version uh, and I use raw sienna a very great deal and uh, more than burnt sienna which is the one that I've just swatched out next to it and so I wasn't used to it being that weak so I kept adding more, more pigment uh, the one just swatched was, is umber um, which is um, the White Knight's version of a raw umber it's a, it, that's a cool tone and the one now is burnt umber the White Knight's umber is actually I've just realised the one that I picked out um, that I didn't like the mix of. Um, the reason I didn't like the mix, when I use raw umber, I use um, a, a, the single pigment paint. It is just raw umber. The umber, the, the, the raw umber version in White Nights, is a three pigment paint. It does have PBR7 in it, but there's another two pigments in there as well. I, um, I'm not keen on that. I like my umber to be a single pigment paint but like I say the um, earth tones in this palette are really quite weak compared to some of the other makers um, the last four on that card then after after burnt umber are Mars brown sepia neutral black and then the very last one is the premix paints grey that's not a bad colour, the premix paints grey but I still prefer to mix my own um, as you can see even with quite a lot of pigment down um, the uh, paints are really still um, quite weak on the earth tones. So, I hope this has helped. Thank you very much for listening. If you're thinking about buying the White Knights palette, I personally feel it is a bargain and you won't regret it. Okay, thank you. Bye.